Have you noticed that native English speakers use different types of intonation at commas? And do you know what to do with your intonation when you reach a comma or natural pausing point in a sentence? If not, keep watching and I'll explain. Hi, I'm Lori with Pronunciation Pro. In each of my videos, I provide just a snippet of information about American English pronunciation. A snippet is a small amount of something. So the goal of these videos is to give you just one small thing in each one that you can focus on to help you achieve that American English sound. This is the second in my series of videos on intonation. And in this one, we'll be addressing what to do with your intonation when you reach the end of a clause, which is a natural pausing point in a sentence and is typically marked by a comma in written passages. So before we start on this topic, let's do a brief recap of what intonation is. Intonation is what you're doing with the pitch of your voice, whether the pitch is rising or falling. If you listen to a native English speaker, you'll notice that their pitch does distinctive things when they reach the end of a clause, which would be a natural place to pause in the sentence. There are two basic types of intonation that are used at the end of a clause, a rising pitch, and a falling pitch. The type of intonation used depends on what type of a clause you're dealing with, independent or dependent. So let's talk about those two types of clauses. An independent clause is one that could stand alone as a complete sentence. If you put a period at the end of the clause instead of a comma, it would make a complete sentence. Let me give you some examples. I've bolded the independent clause in each one to make it stand out. Summer is my favorite season, but I also enjoy spring and fall. I could put a period after the word season and that clause would form a complete sentence. Summer is my favorite season. So we generally use a falling intonation here, just as we would if we had put a period where that comma is. Here's another example. I have too much work to do, so I won't be going to the gym today. I could put a period after the word do, and that clause would form a complete sentence. I have too much work to do. So our intonation falls. However, sometimes people will use an upswing in intonation if they're not finished with their sentence, even though they're using an independent clause. For example, I got a promotion at work and I'm really excited about it. Or, he told me he would be here, so let's just wait a few more minutes. In contrast, a dependent clause is one that cannot stand alone as a complete sentence. It's incomplete without the words that come after the comma. So we use a rising intonation to show that our thought is not finished yet. Here are some examples, and again, I've bolded the dependent clause in each one. Before we get too far down the road, let's check our directions. The clause before we get too far down the road cannot stand on its own as a complete sentence. So our intonation will rise at the comma to indicate more is coming. Here's another one. If you want my opinion, I'd be happy to share it with you. If you want my opinion cannot stand alone as a complete sentence, so our intonation would rise at the comma to indicate the sentence is not finished yet. Words and phrases that start dependent clauses are called subordinate conjunctions. And if you want a complete list of them, see the document I've included in the comments section. So the basic rule of thumb is this. If the words before the comma or pausing point could stand alone as a complete sentence, you can use either a downward or an upward swing in intonation. But if the words before the comma do not form a complete sentence, then this clause requires an upswing in intonation. If you found this information helpful, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to work on your American English pronunciation in a more comprehensive manner instead of in snippets, 
please check out our program, Pronunciation Pro. I've included the link in the comments section below. In the meantime, happy practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.